In this video, you're going to learn how to find the scale factor in similar figures and how to use that scale factor to find uh, missing side lengths or missing areas or missing volumes. So let's dive in. We're going to go through five different problems uh, talking about working with the scale factor. So this first example, we have this cube over here. We'll call this cube A. We have this larger cube, cube B, and these are similar figures. Now, what does that mean similar? It means they're the same shape, but they're not the same size. So one's proportionally larger or proportionally smaller than the other one. All the angle measures are preserved. It's just the corresponding sides are multiplied by a scale factor. Kind of like when you go on your phone or your iPad or your computer and you expand something. It, it doesn't distort the image. It just makes it larger or smaller, depending on what you're looking for, right? So let's take a look at this figure here. Now, when we go from A to B, okay, let's talk about that. What's the scale factor from this figure A to this figure B? Okay, now one way to do this is to think of this uh, formula right here. K is oftentimes used for the scale factor. It's the ratio of the new figure over the old figure. Okay, so in this case, if you're going from A to B, B is going to be our new figure, and we'll say that, okay, 4 divided by 2 is equal to a scale factor of 2. And that kind of makes sense because we're basically doubling everything to get from 2 to 4, 2 to 4, 2 to 4. It's a scale factor of 2, right? Now, what would be the scale factor if you were going from B back to A? Well, if, again, using this formula, if we're going from B to A, the new figure would be 2. The old figure is 4. What's 2 divided by 4? That's going to be 1 half. Now you'll notice that 2 and 1 half, they're reciprocals of each other, right? And how do you know if you have the right uh, scale factor or the right order? Well, if the number is larger than 1, then we know it's going to be getting larger. It's an enlargement. If the number is between 0 and 1, like a half, we know it's a reduction. It's getting smaller. So you can use that as a guide to see if you're on the right track. Now, there's something called the similarity ratio. Now, ratio is like when you're comparing two quantities, right? And you can do that as a fraction or with a colon or even with the word two in between, like A to B. But let's take a look at this one, the similarity ratio of A to B. So what is the similarity ratio of A to B? Well, you can see that's like two to four. So you could write that as a one-half similarity ratio. Notice this is different than the scale factor from A to B. Scale factor was two. The ratio of A to B was 1 to 2, or 1 half. What's the similarity ratio of B to A? Well, that's going to be 4 to 2, which reduces to 2 to 1. So you could write it as 2 to 1 like this, or 2 to 1, or 2 to 1. Or you could just say it's 2, because anything divided by 1 is itself. So be careful a little bit with the language. Sometimes that throws students a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how do we compare the one-dimensional quantities, like the side lengths or the perimeter, or the two-dimensional quantities like the surface area or the three-dimensional quantities like the volume. So let's look at that. So the perimeter of the base, so if I add up all these sides for the base of this cube, that's two, 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 that's gonna be a perimeter of eight centimeters, right? If I look at the perimeter of this base, four, 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 that's gonna be 16 centimeters. And notice that the ratio of eight divided by 16 is one half, right? Very interesting, okay, so that's very similar to the scale factor going from here to here, one half, right? Now, when we compare the surface area, the areas, all the surfaces is the surface area. So basically, we have a square here that's four, and we have six of those squares, so that gives us a surface area of 24 centimeters squared. Over here, we have a square, 16 times six of those squares for all the faces, that's gonna be uh, 96. Now, what's interesting, 24 and 96, if you write this as a fraction, that's actually one-fourth. Hmm, what's happening here? This was a ratio of one-half. This is a ratio of one-fourth. What you can see here is that this one-fourth is the scale factor squared, one-half times one-half, right? Now, let's look at the volume. Volume is length times width times height. Two times two times two, that's eight centimeters cubed. Volume is length times width times height. That's four times four times four. That's 64 centimeters cubed. What's the ratio here? Eight over 64, that's one eighth. And you can see that that's the scale factor cubed. So you can think to yourself, am I dealing with a one dimensional quantity like length or perimeter, that's length, 
then it's gonna be the same as the scale factor. Am I dealing with area, which is like two dimensional, like length times width? Then I'm gonna take the scale factor and square it. One half squared is one fourth. Or am I dealing with volume, which is length times width times height? It's three dimensional. You're gonna be taking the scale factor and cubing it to get the ratio of the volumes. We're gonna be using this concept in some of the upcoming examples. Let's go to example number two now. Okay, for example number two now, we've got a, B, C, D is similar to W, X, Y, Z. So these are, look like they're trapezoids, but the main thing is that when you have this similarity statement, that it tells us what matches up with what. A matches up with W, or side AB matches up with side WX. So you can use this as a guide to figure out which parts correspond. And so in this case, we're looking for the length of YZ. Now YZ matches up with CD, that's this segment right here. Now, because we know that the two figures are similar to one another, we can make a proportion. We can say nine is to three, see AD is to WZ. Okay, so let's write that down. Nine is to three as four is to, let's call this X. Now, the key thing when you make a proportion is you wanna compare left to right, left to right, or big figure to small figure, big figure to small figure. And you wanna make sure you're matching up the corresponding parts. Now that we have our proportion, we can cross multiply on the diagonal. We can say nine times X is equal to four times three, which is 12. Divide both sides by nine. And you can see that comes out to 12 ninths, which is four thirds centimeters. So this is gonna be four thirds centimeters. Okay, now part B here, it says find the perimeter of A, B, C, D. They're telling us the perimeter of the smaller figure is eight centimeters. How do we find the perimeter of the large figure? Well, the perimeter, it's one dimensional. It's just like length. So the ratio of the sides will be the same as the ratio of the perimeters because you're just comparing those one dimensional components there. So what we can do is we could say three is to nine which is like a one-third ratio, one-third, as the perimeter of this smaller figure, eight is to the perimeter of this larger figure. We'll just call it P for perimeter. Now, here's where students sometimes go a little bit off to the tracks. See how we say have one to three? One is smaller than three, so that says we're comparing the small figure to the large figure, right? Small to large. So we wanna do the perimeter of the small figure to the perimeter of the large figure. So small to large, small to large. Or you could do it as, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> right to left, right to left. Or you do it the other way, left to right, left to right. You just wanna stay consistent. <clears throat> excuse me, so now when you cross multiply on the diagonal, P times one is P, eight times three is 24, so P is equal to 24. So that's our perimeter, 24 centimeters of this larger trapezoid. And then for part C, how do we find the area of this trapezoid A, B, C, D? Well, when we talk about area, it's two-dimensional, right? Because area is like length times width or base times height or in a trapezoid, you know, it's, it's, it's area, two-dimensional. So if, here what we're doing, if we can see that this is like three over nine, that's like a ratio of one to three, we have to take that ratio and square it. So the ratio of the areas is actually gonna be one third squared, which is one to nine. Now again, notice one is smaller than nine, so we're comparing the smaller figure to the larger figure. The smaller figure has an area of six. The larger figure, we don't know, let's just call that A. So now when we cross multiply, you can see nine times six is 54, and A times one is A, so A is equal to 54 centimeters squared is the area of the larger figure. Okay, let's take a look at number three now. We've got two similar cones, and you can see one's a little bit larger than the other one, and they're giving us the volume of the smaller one, but we wanna find the volume of the larger one. So how would you do that problem? Well, we can see that these corresponding components, like in this case, these two radii, are in the ratio of five to six. So let's go ahead and start with that. So five to six. Now that's comparing the one-dimensional components. That's comparing like the radii. But to compare the volume, which is three-dimensional, we have to take that ratio and cube it, or raise it to the third power. So let's go ahead and do that. So five cubed is gonna be 125 
and six cubed is six times six times six, that's 216. So this is gonna be the ratio of the volumes. Notice 125 is smaller than 216, so we have small to large as the volume of the smaller one, which is 100, to the volume of the larger one, let's just call that x. Now we can cross multiply on the diagonal. We can say 125x is equal to 216 times 100, so that's 21,600. And if we divide both sides by 125, let's go to the calculator on this one, we get, uh, let's see, 21,600 divided by 125 is 172.8. Uh, inches cubed for the volume of the larger cone. Okay, for number four now, we've got two similar figures. They'll tell you that they're similar, or they'll show you a little symbol like that. We're trying to find this missing side length here, x. This side length is 16, and it looks like we're being told the areas. So in this case, this is interesting. We're given the area, which is like the two-dimensional component, right? And so if I look at the ratio of uh, the two areas, 144 over nine, if I take the square root of that ratio, that'll give us the ratio of the side lengths. Because remember, side lengths, that's one dimensional and area is two dimensional. So square root of 144 is 12, square root of nine is three, which you can reduce that down to four over one. So now we can see, oh, this is the ratio of the side lengths, four to one. And notice four is bigger than one, so we're comparing the larger figure to the smaller figure. So large to small, large to small. And now we can cross multiply. So we have four X is equal to 16. Divide both sides by four, and you can see X is equal to four centimeters. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, before we dive into this last example, if you like the way that I explain things and you wanna learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra, check out my videos in the description below. I take you through a typical curriculum for both Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 slash College Algebra. So check out those courses. And if you just wanna support uh, the videos that I'm putting up here on my Myers Math Tutoring YouTube channel, consider becoming a channel member. So you can join the channel, and for a few dollars a month, you can uh, be a supporter. And I see all the names and channel names and uh, handles and so forth that come through, and I really appreciate uh, all the support in that regard. And lastly, if you just wanna purchase one of my fun uh, math t-shirts, those are for sale as well on my Teespring store, and I'll have links in the description and also below the video. So let's dive into this last uh, example, and I, I appreciate your support. For number five, what we're given is two similar uh, cylinders, and they're not drawn to scale, and so that's something to pay attention to in your book and, and when you're doing these problems. But notice they're given, giving us the volumes, and they give us the surface area, but we're trying to find the surface area of this larger cylinder. So we know they're similar, so what we can do is let's compare the volumes in a ratio, 27 over 1,000. Now remember, volume is 3D. It's like length times width times height. And so in order to find out what the ratio of like the side lengths are, like the heights or the radii, we have to take the cube root of this ratio. So cube root of 27 is three, cube root of 1,000, that's 10. So the ratio of the one dimensional components is gonna be three to 10. But we're interested in the two dimensional surface areas. So what we have to do is take this ratio of the one dimensional components, the three over 10, and we're gonna to have to square that. So the ratio of the area, the ratio of the two areas is gonna be nine over 100, right? So now we can make a proportion. We can say nine over 100, small to large, equals the surface area of the small cylinder, 20, to the surface area of the large cylinder, x. So now let's go ahead and solve. We're gonna cross multiply on the diagonal, nine x, is equal to 2,000. And if we divide both sides by nine, x is equal to 2,000 ninths centimeters squared, or if we wanna get that as a decimal, it's gonna be 222.2 centimeters squared. Okay, great job. If you wanna see some more examples talking about these same types of problems involving scale factor, 
follow me over to that video I did previously right there, and I'll see you over in that video.